The next morning the Sundara Chola emperor sent for his beautiful bride. He ordered the preacher, nurses and doctors to stay away. He made Kundave sit next to him and rubbed his back lovingly. Kuntava knew that he was struggling to say what he wanted to say. Father! Are you angry at me? She asked. Sundara Chola had tears in his eyes. Why are you so angry, mother? Said. For disobeying their orders and coming to Tanjavur. Yes, you must not have come in defiance of my orders, this Tanjavur palace is not fit for young ladies to live in. You know that from what happened last night. What incident are you talking about, Dad? I'm talking about that Kajumbalar woman fainting. How is that woman now? She's fine today, Dad. She used to lose her temper like this in the old room too. She'll be fine after a while. Did you ask her, Mother? Didn't she say she saw or heard anything in this palace last night? Kundave thought for a while and said, Yes, Father. When we all went to the Durgai temple, she tried to go upstairs alone. Then she heard someone wailing pitifully. She said it scared her. That's what I thought too. Do you know now, child? There's a ghost prowling this palace. You shouldn't be here. Go away. When Sundara Kalar said that, Kundave noticed that his body was shaking and his eyes were staring somewhere. Dad. So why should you be here? Why should mom be here? Everyone can just go to the old room. Don't you know that your body is cured by coming here? She said. The emperor's sorrowful smile understood, and said, What will my body be cured from now on? I have no desire to do so. Why despair like that? Father. The old doctor says he can heal their bodies. Believing what he says, you two have sent for herbs from Ceylon. I have heard. My daughter. That shows the affection you have for me. Is it wrong for a daughter to have affection for her father, father? There is nothing wrong with that. It is my blessing to have such a desirous daughter. There is nothing wrong with you sending someone to bring herbs from Sri Lanka. But whether the herb comes from Sri Lanka, whether it comes from Savak Island, or even if the elixir comes from the heavenly world, my body will not be cured in this birth. Oh no! Don't say that! Said the princess. You have come here against my orders, mother. I am indeed glad of it. I had thought that one day I should open my heart and tell you the truth. Now is the chance. I tell you, listen. If I have a physical ailment, herbal medicine will cure it. My ailment is not physical, it is mental anxiety. What medicine? Father, what kind of incessant anxiety can you, the emperor who rules the three worlds, have? You speak the wondrous imagination of the poets, child. I am not an emperor who rules three worlds, nor one who rules all the worlds. My kingdom is a small corner of the world. I cannot bear the weight of it. Why should you bear it, father? Aren't you fit to bear the burden of a kingdom? They have two sons by the hour. Both are lion cubs, valiant warriors. They can bear any burden. Daughter. Just thinking about it makes me sick to my stomach. Both your brothers are matchless warriors. Like you, I brought them up with an eye for an eye. I doubt if it would do them any good to give them this kingdom. Would it be better to leave them with a great curse along with the kingdom? What curse can there be for this kingdom? Sibi, who gave flesh for a pigeon, and Mananithachola, who gave a son for a calf, are the ancestors of our clan. Karakal Valavaru and Paranakilai ruled this kingdom. Vira Vijayalaya Chola, who carried 96 wounds in Tirumani, sat on this throne. 108 temples on the river Kaveri. Aditha Chola who took it and Paranthakar who took it with gold and made it gold expanded this kingdom. This is the Dharma Maharaja ruled by Kandaratitha who saw love and Shiva as their own. What can be a curse to such a kingdom? Father! You are in some kind of delusion. Leave this Tanjavur fort. If leaving. You don't know what will happen the next moment if I leave this place. 
Do you think that I am happy to leave the beautiful old palace and stay in this prison of Tanjore Fort? Kuntave, I am here to save this legendary Chola kingdom from falling apart. Think of what happened last night when the play was being played. Neela Matted and I was watching everything from the front. I even thought of stopping the play in the middle. Father! What is this? The play was very good. I was filled with the pride of the Chola clan. Why did you want to stop? What part of the play did you dislike? The play was good, my daughter. I see nothing wrong with it. I am talking about the behavior of the people who saw the play. Did you not notice the rival slogans raised by the Kajum Balarg party and the Palyavetarayar party? Noticed, Dad. These people are behaving like this while I alone am here. Think what would have happened if I had not been here. The moment I left Tanjavur, there would be a quarrel between the two parties. Just as the descendants of Lord Krishna attacked each other and perished, when these two perished, this great empire would perish. Father! You are a tyrannical emperor in this Chola empire. Both the Palyavatarayas and the Kajumbalar Velaris are bound to do with their heads what their feet do. If they transgress, they seek their own destruction. Why should you care? Daughter! For the past hundred years, these two clans have done unparalleled service to the Chola Empire. Could the Chola Kingdom have become so prosperous without their help? If they perish, will the kingdom also weaken? Father! If one of those two parties is known to be traitors who are plotting against them. Sundara Chola stared at Kundave in amazement and asked, What are you saying, my daughter? A conspiracy against me? Who is doing it? He asked. Father. Some who are pretending to be their true servants are secretly plotting against themselves. They are conspiring to disenfranchise their sons and entitle someone else. Who? Whose daughter? Who else are they trying to make your brothers don't have titles? Sundara Chola Emperor asked excitedly. Kundave said in a soft voice, to Siddhapamad Huranthagan, Father. They are committing such terrible treachery when you are lying on the sick bed. Immediately, Sundara Kalar sat up a little straighter and said, Aga, how good would it be if only their efforts were successful? Said. Thrown to squat. Father! What is this, that you are enemies to your own sons? She said. No, I am not an enemy to my sons. I want to do them good. They don't need this cursed kingdom. If only Madhurandha will agree. What makes Siddhapa agree? He is divinely agreeing. He is ready to tie the knot tomorrow. Are you going to do this? Shouldn't you ask for my brother's consent? Yes, you have to ask Aditha Kari Kalan. Just asking him is not enough. Your great-grandmother has to agree. Would the mother say no if the child was given a degree? Why won't you say? Don't you know him after all these days with your great-grandmother? I ascended the throne that day because of the insistence of Sembian Mathavi. I also crowned Adithan as a prince. Kuntave. Your great-grandmother loves you very much. Tell her politely and get consent to crown Madhurand Hagen. Kuntavi was stunned and speechless. Then go to Kanchi. There tell your brother Aditha Kari Kalan and make him say, I don't want this cursed kingdom. Daddy! Do you curse often? What curse do you say? Kundave asked. Daughter! Do you believe what they say about previous births? Do you believe that memories of previous births sometimes come in this birth? Father! Those are great things. What do I know about those things? You tell about the ten incarnations of Lord Vishnu. You tell that Lord Buddha took many incarnations before the last incarnation? You tell so many beautiful stories about those incarnations. I hear you, Dad. Does God and the incarnate men not have progenitors than only ordinary men? Maybe Dad. Sometimes, my daughter, I have memories of previous births. I have never told anyone about them. If I tell them, no one will believe or understand. 
they will say that I am suffering from a physical illness as well as mental delusions. They will start bringing doctors and witches because it is not enough to trouble them. Yes, father. Some say so now. Their sickness cannot be cured by medicine, they say they must call in the witches. See? You don't think like that? You don't laugh after listening to me. Said the emperor. Ask me, father. Don't I know how broken your mind is? Shall I laugh at them? Kundave said. Her eyes watered. I know, daughter. That's why I'm telling you what I haven't told anyone else. Listen to some of my past birth memories. Said Sundara Kalar. A beautiful island surrounded by sea on all four sides. Green trees were everywhere in Ateva. Where there were no trees there were close bushes. A young man was hiding in a bush on the beach. He was staring at a ship with its sails spread out in the sea at a distance. He watched until it disappeared. Then Dad. We survived. He sighed. The boy was born in a royal family. But he is not entitled to the kingdom, he has no desire to rule the kingdom. His father had three brothers born before him. Therefore he never dreamed of ruling the kingdom, no desire. He also went with the army that went to war across the sea. He was given command of a small army. His army failed in the battle. Countless people will die. Even in the army led by the youth, everyone rose. That boy also dared to risk his life in battle and performed many heroic deeds. But he did not die. The survivors of the defeated army arrived at the port. They prepared to go back to their motherland. Only the boy didn't want to go back. He did not want to go back to his motherland after losing all the soldiers under him. Members of his clan are famous as Mahaviras. He didn't want that fame to be stolen by him. Therefore, while the ship was sailing, a beautiful island was visible in the distance, and the young man jumped into the sea without anyone else knowing. He swam ashore on the island. He waited until the ship was out of sight. Then he climbed a tree and sat under its branch and looked around. The beauty of the island captivated him. But there seemed to be no human traffic in Adui. At the time it did not appear to him to be a drawback. His enthusiasm is overwhelming. He was sitting leaning on a tree branch daydreaming about the future. Members of his clan are famous as Mahaviras. He didn't want that fame to be stolen by him. Therefore, while the ship was sailing, a beautiful island was visible in the distance, and the young man jumped into the sea without anyone else knowing. He swam ashore on the island. He waited until the ship was out of sight. Then he climbed a tree and sat under its branch and looked around. The beauty of the island captivated him. But there seemed to be no human traffic in Adui. At the time it did not appear to him to be a drawback. His enthusiasm is overwhelming. He was sitting leaning on a tree branch daydreaming about the future. Members of his clan are famous as Mahaviras. He didn't want that fame to be stolen by him. Therefore, while the ship was sailing, a beautiful island was visible in the distance, and the young man jumped into the sea without anyone else knowing. He swam ashore on the island. He waited until the ship was out of sight. Then he climbed a tree and sat under its branch and looked around. The beauty of the island captivated him. But there seemed to be no human traffic in Adui. At the time it did not appear to him to be a drawback. His enthusiasm is overwhelming. He was sitting leaning on a tree branch daydreaming about the future. Therefore, while the ship was sailing, a beautiful island was visible in the distance, and the young man jumped into the sea without anyone else knowing. He swam ashore on the island. He waited until the ship was out of sight. Then he climbed a tree and sat under its branch and looked around. The beauty of the island captivated him. But there seemed to be no human traffic in Adui. At the time it did not appear to him to be a drawback. His enthusiasm is overwhelming. He was sitting leaning on a tree branch daydreaming about the future. Therefore, while the ship was sailing, a beautiful island was visible in the distance, and the young man jumped into the sea without anyone else knowing. He swam ashore on the island. 
he waited until the ship was out of sight. Then he climbed a tree and sat under its branch and looked around. The beauty of the island captivated him. But there seemed to be no human traffic in Adui. At the time it did not appear to him to be a drawback. His enthusiasm is overwhelming. He was sitting leaning on a tree branch daydreaming about the future. Then he climbed a tree and sat under its branch and looked around. The beauty of the island captivated him. But there seemed to be no human traffic in Adui. At the time it did not appear to him to be a drawback. His enthusiasm is overwhelming. He was sitting leaning on a tree branch daydreaming about the future. Then he climbed a tree and sat under its branch and looked around. The beauty of the island captivated him. But there seemed to be no human traffic in Adui. At the time it did not appear to him to be a drawback. His enthusiasm is overwhelming. He was sitting leaning on a tree branch daydreaming about the future. He turned around when he suddenly heard a shout in a human voice, that to a woman's voice. A young woman was running screaming. A terrible bear ran after her. As he watched the bear was getting closer and closer to the woman. The distance between the two was narrowing. There was no time to think of anything else. The boy jumped down from the tree branch. He took the possible job in the tree and ran away. The bear was about to approach the woman and place its terrible claws on her neck. At that time he saw the mark and started working. Vale attacked the bear. The bear wheel turned away with a sound that could be heard in all seven worlds. The girl survived, but the boy was in danger. A wounded bear rushed towards him. A fight took place between the boy and the bear. In the end it was the boy who won. The victorious youth's eyes immediately searched all around. At first he did not know what he was looking for. Then suddenly it became clear. The girl his eyes searched for was standing leaning on a coconut tree behind a palm tree that had grown bent over. Her eyes were full of wonder and her face was full of joy. She is a forest girl. Her appearance and dress suggested that she was ignorant of the civilized life of the world. But she was said to have no one in the world to match her beauty. The scene where the woman stood there seemed like a painting by an artist of unparalleled power. The young man thought that she could not be a woman of this world even if she was indeed a woman. He came closer. But she didn't magically disappear as he expected. Unexpectedly she took off and ran. He ran after her for a while. Then he stopped. He was so tired that he could not even keep up with the woman who ran with the speed of a deer. Also, he thought it was impolite to keep running after a woman. Should she be on this little island? We'll never see her again. He stopped considering that. He went to the beach and lay down on the sand and got tired. His hopes were not in vain. After a while the girl came back. She brought an elderly man with her. It turned out that Van De Van belonged to the Kuryar class, who live along the coast of the island of Sri Lanka and survive by catching fish. Through him Avaliban learned an important truth. That is, he knew that the woman had saved his life at the right time. He was sitting on a branch and staring at the sea when a bear came up behind him and stared at him. Then started climbing the tree. The girl was watching all this. She yelled like that to draw the bear in another direction and warn the boy. The bear left climbing the tree and started running after her. Do you want to tell me how the boy felt when he heard this? He expressed his gratitude to the woman who saved him. But she didn't say a word in reply. Whatever the youth said to her, the man who came with her replied. This surprised the boy at first. When I realized what the truth was, my astonishment disappeared. The girl was mute and could not speak. When he came to know that she was deaf, Avarlapan's affection multiplied. Circumstances and occasions helped affection to grow and thrive. Being deaf and unable to speak did not appear to be a disadvantage to Avalaban. Her eyes revealed wonderful truths and intimate secrets that no mouth could tell. What other language in this world is equivalent to that Nyana Bash? As it was, her sense of the nose was incredibly powerful in exchange for her deafness. With her sense of smell, she was able to find out what wild beast was hiding far away in the middle of the thick forest. But what is all this for? 
if the two hearts are united, what is the concern of the other senses? A TV seemed like heaven to the boy. Days, months, years passed like this. He forgot to count how many days or years it had been. What about the other senses? A TV seemed like heaven to the boy. Days, months, years passed like this. He forgot to count how many days or years it had been. What about the other senses? A TV seemed like heaven to the boy. Days, months, years passed like this. He forgot to count how many days or years it had been. This heavenly life of the youth suddenly came to an end one day. A ship landed near the island. Many people came down from it in boats and rafts. The boy went closer to see who they were. He knew that they had come looking for him. Many unexpected events have happened in his country. His father had two elder brothers who died. Another has no son. So he knew that a great empire was waiting for him. There was a big conflict in his heart. He didn't want to leave that beautiful island and the dumb girl who made it a paradise. At the same time, the desire to see the village and close relatives attracted him on one side. He knew that the country of his birth was surrounded by danger on all sides. The cry of the battle cry came to his ears from far away. This helped him decide. I am coming back, I have fulfilled my duty, he assured her a thousand times and left. Born and brought up in the forest, the mute girl did not want to be among the people from the country. When the boy got into the boat she was sitting on top of an old crooked coconut tree and watching. Both her eyes then appeared to the boy as two seas of tears. But he set his mind to stone and got into the boat and reached the ship. Kundave. That woman of the nether clan was standing and watching, the memory of that scene often appears before my mind's eye. No matter how hard I try, I cannot forget it. Another scene that is even sadder than that the scene that makes the clan tremble even when I think about it, often appears. It saddens and torments me during the night and the day when I sleep and when I am awake. Shall I say that too? Sundara Kalar asked his beautiful daughter. Tell me, father, said Sundara Chola's daughter, Aramtake Kumari, in a husky voice.